really hands down, although it has some little minor things that are not perfect, it's the best option for vlogging without a doubt if you go for ultimate picture quality, workflow, easy to use, flippy screen and all that kind of stuff. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog, welcome to the studio. Today, unfortunately, no music making. I still have to take mats because my bag hurts. And these pills make me like mushy. I can't focus on making music. So today's vlog is a filler vlog. And since I love gear and tech, today we'll talk actually about the camera and the setup I'm using in 2020 to actually film myself, to film my daily vlog. And trust me, when it comes to vlogging, you can call me kind of an expert. I'm daily vlogging already for three and a half years. I had like so many cameras. My first vlog camera was the Sony 5100. Then I had a Canon M, what was it? 30, 40, 50, something like that. I had all of them. Then the Sony A6100, 300, 500, Sony A7S II, Sony A7 Mark III. And now I finally found the perfect one. There's just like one small drawback if you need 4K, it's not for you, but let me tell you, I can't recommend you to daily vlog in 4K or vlog at all in 4K. It's not really necessary. YouTube will anyways like make the footage look like shit. And no one is watching, at least right now, in 4K. Like my stats on my channel, it's like four or five percent people watching in 4K if 4K is available. And even like recording in 4K downsampling, it's not worth it. Your computer will just scream and editing every day in 4K will just slow down your process and ruin your entire day. So let me try and break down the entire setup. Usually I'm using this right here as my selfie stick. That's a Serio, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's a German company actually, very close here to my studio. Serio 3T35K. It's actually like a stand, like a desk stand for cameras. So you can like fold up these three legs, you can fold them down and grab it right here. You can like lock and unlock these three legs to actually fold them up. This is the most compact it actually gets. And then you can extend it also right here. And at the very top, you just have your regular ball hat. So usually the camera is attached here. That's what I use for vlogging. If you want to just put it on, on a desk or something, it works. I know a lot of people like to use these um, bendy tripods, the Gorilla Pods. I actually don't know where mine is at. It should be somewhere here in this mess. Probably underneath the GoPro stuff, headphones. That's like an alternative that is actually better than, than the Gorilla Pod thing. There it is. You see? You see, that's that's the problem. It really likes to break. Like every month I needed to get a new one. I also had the big version that is a little sturdier, but it's it still breaks. This one never breaks and you can fold it, which is like a huge plus. If you need to sneak in somewhere, you can just make it disappear, put it in your bag and you're ready to go. Only downside of this is that you can't attach it to I don't know, to a pole or something outside, like random. It only stands on flat surfaces. If you put it anywhere else, it just won't work. And then of course we got the microphone. This right here is the D80. I hope I'm pronouncing this correct. Just get rid of this. So it's a standard shotgun microphone if you talk into the front, it picks up everything nicely. From the back, not that much. From the sides, a little less. So it focuses on whatever is in front of the camera. But even from the back, it still sounds okay. Cause a lot of times you point at something and you talk to the back of the, the camera, of the setup, and it still works. And it also takes care of shock and rumble a little. And at the back, you can see it's like the, the, the cheaper version. There's also a pro version where you can change the volume. 
I don't need that for vlogging. I just set it to the lowest volume and do all of it on post because this way you just get the best quality. But the amazing thing is it automatically detects whenever I turn on the camera. So there is never the situation that you have to turn it on yourself. It does it automatically and this way it doesn't happen that you start vlogging and your mic is not on and you end up with like half an hour of footage without any audio. This is quite annoying, trust me. Is it light to bright? A little, maybe. It looks the same, but anyways. Um, and then I got this right here. It's the Movo Blimp. I mean, it's, it's instead of having the furry things, these sound a little better if they get wet. No problem. You don't have the fur that like, just looks really bad after a while and doesn't doesn't do its job anymore. It holds up pretty well in windy situations. By the way, I'll link everything down below if you're interested. So that's that's kind of the setup that goes on top of the camera. Now let's get to the camera itself. For that, I will need my phone. This entire setup, again, the stand, the camera right here, it's a Canon EOS R with a pretty, pretty huge lens. Actually also a very expensive lens. It's the 15 to 35. It's an amazing setup. It's heavy, it's expensive, but it's one of the only cameras with a flippy screen so you can see yourself with a mic input, full frame, mirrorless, and with probably the best lens on the market. So again, in my opinion, it's the perfect vlogging camera. It's heavy, it's pricey, but this is about the ultimate vlogging camera. I wanted to have the best possible setup to make my daily vlog YouTube videos about my life as a DJ and producer. And I finally found it. Like I've never been as happy with a camera before. Personal reasons, cause I had like the A7, A7 III. I'm right now selling it actually. This was my previous vlog camera. It's a little smaller. It's the same price roughly, but the lens was less expensive. It's great, but it doesn't have the flippy screen, so you never know if you're recording or not. And the colors, I don't know, they're like, a lot of people talk about Canon colors, Sony colors, blah, blah, blah. But the Sony needed a lot of work in post-production. And the Canon, it just looks good. Like you just film and it looks good. Maybe not right now, cause it's like dark outside using like artificial light and like that light is really, really ugly light. But it produces an image that I can just use straight from the camera. And it looks decent to really great actually, and not have to, to change anything about it. Cause if you daily vlog or just weekly vlog or whatever you do, it takes a lot of time to color grade. You're not like a Hollywood movie production studio and you don't have someone dedicated just to color grading. Don't do it. Like, trust me, don't do it. Don't use any color grading if you vlog on, on any kind of basis, actually. It's not worth it. No one will notice it. I did it for a while and some people said, yes, the colors are nice, but it doesn't change the story. It doesn't change the topic. It doesn't change what you're filming. Just get a camera that delivers a good picture quality straight off the camera. And this one does it. It's just, it's just perfect. There are of course some, some little downsides. Number one, 4K, as I said at the beginning, is not really possible. Yes, it can shoot 4K, but it crops in. It means it's just using like a tiny bit of the sensor. So you're losing all of the advantage, the low light capabilities and like the background blur and all that kind of stuff. And it doesn't shoot 120p. So slow motion works 60p, so you can slow it down by half, but a quarter is not possible, which looks really nice and cinematic and I love it. And the Sony did it, but losing this one function that I rarely use over having all of these benefits, definitely worth it. There is just, unfortunately, absolutely no way for me to show you now how nice this actually is while vlogging. I mean, yes, walking around a little, but again, it's already dark, it doesn't look that good. So uh, maybe I'll film like a, a tiny bit tomorrow. So quick vlogging test. Unfortunately, the next day it's uh, the weather is just shit. There's even a little bit of like frozen mist. 
everywhere. But yeah, that's the quality. It tracks my eye, it tracks my face. So the autofocus is one of the best. It sometimes misses, but then you at least can see it compared to other cameras. By the way, that steel over there, one of them is like 12 tons. That's 12 times my car. And yeah, that's the that's entire building I'm working in. That's where like both the studios are in. And yeah, this, this I think concludes the, the simple vlogging test. Let's do a little bit of B-roll. Because for the B-roll, I actually got like one more gadget that just makes amazing footage. So that was the, what is it, 24 to 240 RF lens. That's not premium, it's like the, the budget version, but still quite expensive. I use it whenever I need more reach, just to zoom in. And then the last thing, Mavic Mini. Yes, it's really that tiny. I use it whenever I need drone shots, and that's pretty much it. That's all that goes into my daily vlogging camera bag. By the way, this bag, I absolutely love it. You just slide this in and got all of your equipment ready. Are there other options? Unfortunately, not really. There's like the Panasonic S1H, but it's, it's even bigger and more expensive. It has the flippy screen, but like it's it's a little overkill for vlogs but if you need 4k maybe your only option but the autofocus really sucks so at the moment i think the canon eos r with the 15 to 35 lens is your best option on the market i hope they will make a mark ii version with like slow motion 120p and maybe 4k in like full frame it would be still nice to have as an option and there are some little things that are a little bit odd about this camera like the the menu system is nice but switching far from video to photo mode is a little weird you have to press two buttons instead of just turning one dial and for example you can't use the gyroscope to know if it's leveled while also tracking eyes and faces both at the same time it just doesn't work. I don't know why. I think like the processor and the camera isn't like the best. Canon saved a little, crippled this camera a little for absolutely no reason. So hopefully Mark II will fix all of that. I will immediately switch. But at the moment, really hands down, although it has some little minor things that are not perfect, it's the best option for vlogging without a doubt if you go for ultimate picture quality workflow easy to use flippy screen and all that kind of stuff so if you have any questions just let me know down below in the comments all of the gear is also in the description and if you're interested to see a full vlog what this camera is capable of, just check out any of my videos of the past three weeks